In this video, we're going to be showing you how to troubleshoot a mechanical diesel engine fuel system, this one on a 3208. Cold morning here, and uh, got some, got a truck that came in last night. Said it's got a cat in it and it won't start. A little bit of this stuff. Chilly morning. Look at that. This is an old top kick. See? Sounds like a Jean Claude Van Damme movie. Uh, but it's not. So, 3208 mechanical engine. Um, haven't worked on one of these and couple years now so this will be other than just basic stuff one start just says it cranks so this will be interesting even as the uh, sticker there still for the engine serial number surprising <clears throat> very clean engine could be interesting so I'm completely spoiled and we pushed this truck into the shop so I could work on it inside and if you're wondering how do you stop a truck where all of the brake cans are caged and there's no air in it Theoretically, you would leave it in gear and hold the clutch pedal in, and if you need to stop, you could release the clutch pedal. Theoretically, of course. So I got a joke for you guys, a diesel joke. So I was talking to some urea the other day, and it wasn't responding. So I said, what's wrong? You can't hear me? And it said, no, I'm deaf. I know, horrible joke. Anyway, this is the cab. Pretty cool shifter it's got here. I have not seen one of these style shifters in a long time. And uh, cab's in pretty good shape, and we're just verifying the concern here that it will not start. So we're gonna crank her, and sure enough, not gonna start. So cranking away there. Not even trying to start, no smoke, nothing. So since I figured I'd be troubleshooting this a while, I went ahead and hooked up my little battery charger, which pulls about about four amps. It's just gonna slowly charge those batteries. While I'm testing it, also I rigged up a system to crank the engine without being in the cab so I can actually troubleshoot the thing. Now, what I did first is what pretty much anyone should do is crack these fuel lines going into the head or any of the fuel lines you can get to easily. And we're gonna crank it and we're just gonna see if it's pushing any fuel out. Of course, we need to have the key on so the fuel shutoff solenoid is allowing fuel to go through the pump. And then we're just gonna crank it. And you should see, normally, if the pump is working, you should see quite a bit of fuel spraying out of these. These are going directly to your nozzle. And if you watch the rear one, you can see just a little bit of fuel spraying out. Uh, very minor, so obviously we have something going on. Now, I always like to check that there's actually fuel in the vehicle because uh, I don't want to pull a sling blade. It ain't got no gas in it. Definitely, well, not gas, but diesel in this one. And it had two tanks. I checked both. Just trust me. And the way the fuel system works on this is fuel comes in from the tank to this fuel water separator here. It then goes out of the fuel water separator, which is this clear little plastic bowl and it goes into your secondary fuel filter. It has a couple drains on the housing as well. So that's the line we just looked at. It's coming into this, the secondary fuel filter, that goes out after the filter and goes into the pump right here. Now, the return from the pump, this has a fuel return, is right here where that little T-handle deal is, right there. It goes around the back of the pump here, around the fuel shutoff solenoid, goes back into the housing here, and then it goes Follow the, following that line goes back to your fuel tank. There should be fuel always flowing throughout the system, and that is your fuel shutoff solenoid. Now you may or may not have caught it, but in the fuel water separator, look at the bottom of this thing. It is a third full of just dirty mud garbage. And the secondary filter, look at that, 2017. It is 2021. So I've got my snap-on bucket there not just a coolant bucket. And what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be draining some fuel out of the pump by 
loosening that T-handle all the way up. So what that's gonna do is if the transfer pump internal to the fuel pump is flowing fuel, it will purge out of that yellow line there, which means basically fuel, even though these filters are super old, will be flowing. So we're cranking, and look, there is fuel coming out of the system. Now I ordered new filters and we we're waiting for them, but I figured I'd keep troubleshooting until I got them. So as you can see, fuel is flowing through the pump. It's red dyed fuel, which doesn't matter, but as it goes through the pump, that basically means the pump is spinning and the transfer pump is working. Now, maybe there's a problem due to the filters, but so basically we, we can surmise at this point that at least fuel's flowing through the system. So let's start troubleshooting our fuel shutoff solenoid. Now I have the key off, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure voltage here with both a test light and one of the uh, load pros to test the circuit. Now in the previous video where I was troubleshooting electrical, we were like, people don't know what you're doing, you don't know how to troubleshoot electrical. I know how to troubleshoot electrical. So this is a very, very simple circuit. Basically you're gonna have about 12 volts. Uh, basically anything down to 10 volts will work though in this super simple system. So the key was off there, we're gonna turn it on and then we're gonna verify with the test light which will put a sl small load on it that it's getting proper voltage and it grounds through the housing, so you don't need to really test separate ground. So, look at that, fully illuminated. So we know that voltage is getting to it, but let's actually measure it and apply a load to it so people know that I know what I'm doing. So, we've got, what do we got? We've got my little magnet there for my fluke, and we got 11.3 volts. Not ideal, but there we go. Look, I'm applying a load, the voltage is dropping slightly, but it's enough to hold it on. If you want a load pro or the little magnet for your multimeter, uh, check out my Amazon affiliate links in this video. It really helps the channel. Now, I've removed the fuel shutoff solenoid. So we know the circuit was good, but we need to verify that this little armature inside is not seized. And as you can see, it moves. It doesn't move a lot. It's not supposed to move a lot, though. It's only supposed to move maybe a quarter of an inch. And that's what it's doing. Now what I wanted to do is actually test, even though we tested the circuit, that the fuel shutoff solenoid actually functions as it's supposed to. So I've removed it and done some uh, interesting wiring here, and we're going to verify that it works. Like it works. So it's looking more and more like we might need a high pressure pump here, but we need to verify that it's building pressure inside the pump so that the transfer pump is not the problem. Now what I've done is I've capped the return line and I put a pressure gauge port on the top of the fuel pump there, right next to where the fuel shutoff solenoid goes. And we're gonna crank. Now there's no actual specification that I could find in CAT for what it should build. The regulator is set to about eight PSI. These will fire with almost no PSI. 30 is the maximum though. So you can see it in fire there. We've got our new filters and we still have the return line cap. Let's try it for one last time. As you can see, it's it's building good pressure. We're gonna get over 10 PSI here, but it's just, it's not firing. No firing is happening. There's no smoke or anything. Basically, the pump at this point is highly suspect that it is no good. Ah, that's tragic. Now, even though our pump is bad, we're probably gonna, we're gonna be removing it here. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to remove it though. That's maybe for another video sometime. Time for a little Now, this is a repeat from my previous video, but almost no one watched that video, so hopefully this will be the first time you see it. This is the engine with the uh, the intake manifold removed. Look at the amount of junk in the valley here. It was so much dirt and stuff in here. Look, this is the intake. This is the intake port. There's like an eighth of an inch of dirt in here. I, I'm not sure what the heck was happening. They had an air filter on this. Maybe they didn't have one for a long time, but... They had it when they brought it in. It's uh, not looking too good, but they're still gonna put a pump on it and see if that fixes it. Thanks for watching.